financial markets in turmoil. What are the root causes of the financial crisis? The dollar losing value. Heading for its biggest loss in nearly three decades. Will Social Security even be there? I don't know. Buy or rent? That's a very good question. Interest rates? I'm not so sure. Where do you put your money? I don't know. Welcome to the show that answers your questions. This is Follow the Money Weekly with your host, economist, and best selling author. Here's Jerry Robinson. Friends, welcome to you all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride. As you heard, my name is Jerry Robinson. I am an economist. I'm a trend trader, an investor, an author, speaker, quite a bit. We do a lot here at Follow the Money, and we our ultimate goal is to serve our students, to serve our members. But we also do a free podcast available to the world, and we really enjoy these podcasts. Thanks for dialing in and being a part of today's podcast. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that is, I think, pretty interesting. We're looking forward to 2021, and we're talking about the coming commodities bull market. The coming commodities bull market. And, you know, when we think about where we are, 2020 has been a year for the books, hasn't it? What a wild, zany, difficult challenging year that we've been in in 2020. And so now, as we look forward, we see all of the economic situation that we've been faced with. We see all of the stimulus spending that has occurred. We see all of the Federal Reserve money printing. We see all of the reactions even globally to this coronavirus, this public health crisis. And what we see is, is we see that there's been a lot of wild disarticulations in the economy. There's been a lot of strange things that we haven't seen before. And that if you talk to many people who've been, you know, trading or investing for many years, I've been trading for, you know, more than 25, I guess 25 years now, is the fact that we've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything like this in my life. What we've seen in 2020 has been bizarre beyond all things that I can even think of. What a wild year. Uh, but we've also had incredible uh, gains in so many different markets around the world. It's just been simply breathtaking to see what's happened this year. So today on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the coming commodities bull market. Now, 2020 has been a already been a pretty good year for commodities. And before we dive in too deep, some of you may say, well, what are exactly our commodities? What do you mean? If you're new to our podcast, if you're new to follow the money or to our research, you know, you may not be familiar with what commodities are. They're raw materials that we use to create a livable world, right? You know, as human beings, we have been exploiting the natural resources of the earth for a long time. We use metal to create tools, different energy sources to sustain ourselves. We use agricultural types of commodities to feed ourselves. And so there's many different kinds of classes of commodities. And the way we class them is in a model portfolio that we provide to our members called the PACE Model Portfolio. And PACE, it's an acronym. P stands for precious metals. A stands for agriculture. C stands for commodities. And E stands for energy. So there, when you put them all together, PACE. And these are the areas that we track with our model ETF portfolio when it comes to commodities. And so you can think of gold, you can think of silver being precious metals, platinum and palladium. Uh, when it comes to agriculture, you can think about things like agribusiness, corn and wheat. When it comes to commodities in general, you can think about water even as a commodity. And then, of course, energy, which we can, of course, think of things like crude oil and natural gas and even solar energy to a certain extent, although that kind of falls into the technology sector. But still, we can think of these kinds of things as commodities, and we can profit from the rise in commodity prices. And in fact, the cost of these goods are going to be going up over time as the value of the U.S. dollar goes down. We saw the dollar peak back in March. The markets were trying, kind of scattering, trying to figure out what to do. But by the end of March, uh, the U.S. dollar had peaked and it began to fall, uh, hitting a recent low, pretty big multi-year low just a few days ago, earlier in December. And the problem is, is that we don't see 
any kind of upside catalyst going ahead into 2021 for the dollar. Now, you may say, what does the dollar have to do with commodities? What does that even mean? Well, it's important for us who are investing in commodities to know the value of the U.S. dollar and to keep track of it because commodities go up when the U.S. dollar value goes down. So the Federal Reserve right now is flooding the economy with U.S. dollars, right? We know that. We know that the monetary authorities are flooding the economy with freshly printed currency, just all out of thin air. And when you have more dollars, then things can cost more. Let me give you a perfect example. Okay, let's just say we live on an island. There is $1 million in a briefcase, right? And that represents the entire money supply for the entire island. Well, if you live on that island and you say, I'm going to build a house and I'm going to try to sell this house on this island. Could you build a house and sell it for $2 million? Oh, of course not, right? Because your money supply is only what? It's only $1 million. So you can't charge $2 million for something. There's, there's not $2 million on the island. So you see, the amount of money can determine the price of goods, right? So we don't often tend to think about that. We don't realize that the amount of money that's in the system can actually have a direct impact on the price of goods. So you cannot have a $2 million asset in an economy that only has $1 million dollars, right? It's just impossible. And so whenever the monetary authorities begin to print more money and they create a larger monetary supply, that means that you can raise the price of your good to sell, right? So the more money that's in existence, the more everything can cost. Does that make sense? And so the dollar, as it's losing value, why does it lose value? Well, it loses value because it's being diluted. It's being diluted by the introduction of freshly minted currency. Think about Bitcoin, for example. One of the reasons that Bitcoin, which is, by the way, a commodity, in many ways, it's a very interesting commodity. It's intangible, but it's a commodity. And when we think about Bitcoin, one of the appeals to Bitcoin is the fact that there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever mined throughout history, all the way up to 2140. If you think about it, you'd say, well, that's causing the price of Bitcoin to go up, this constrained supply. Well, what if somehow there was a way to expand that supply? There's not. It's written into hard code and the majority would have to agree to such a change. But, million, but let's just say that we wake up tomorrow and it turns out that there's an easy way to get even more Bitcoin. And so therefore we find out that the finite supply of 21 million is actually going to be 21 billion, okay? What is that going to do to the price of all of the existing Bitcoin? It's going to cause a crash in the price. Why? Nothing's changed, has it? Everything has changed. You changed the supply and therefore you totally messed with the price of the asset, right? So if we could have more Bitcoin suddenly, if people could print Bitcoin like they print dollars, then you would have a general price destruction in the price of Bitcoin because there's more available and it changes the supply demand equation. So it is too with the US dollar. So the US dollar is being printed at will. There is no restraint. The dollar is backed up by nothing. And when you create more dollars, well, it's gonna cause everything that's priced in dollars to be potentially worth more. And we don't see, when we look forward into 2021, we don't see any kind of upside catalyst for the U.S. dollar. So with few upside catalysts ahead, we are really staring at what very likely is going to be an accelerated bull market in many commodities into the next year. Now, our students and members here at Follow the Money have known about this bull market that's already been going on in commodities since earlier this year. You know, commodities in 2019, we go back, we see that commodities hit some really big multi-year lows. Prices really peaked out back in 2008, and they have been under pressure ever since. Well, as I mentioned, our students and members here at Follow the Money, through our PACE model portfolio, being able to profit from the rise of commodity prices in 2020. So I'm just looking right now at our PACE ETF model portfolio, and every single weekend, our members receive weekend ETF uptrend alerts. So if we detect a major uptrend, say in silver or in water or in platinum or in gold mining or in base metals or in palladium, 
and we track many, many of these commodities and we use ETFs to be able to track their price, their overall price. If we detect a new major uptrend in one of these commodities that we track, then we update our members every weekend with that update. So just for example, just last weekend, we detected new major uptrends forming in both U.S. Uh, West Texas Intermediate crude oil and also U.S. Brent oil. And so we chose some ETFs to play those and we alerted our members to that new uptrend, new major uptrend that was forming in these two oil ETFs. So our members received that. But if you go back, say, to uh, May 22nd of 2020, that weekend, our members received an ETF alert on lithium. We said lithium is going higher. It's just entered a new major uptrend. And we gave the ETF ticker LIT as a proxy for the lithium industry. And that was on May 22nd. The price of LIT around that time was about $26.86. It's since risen about 123% since May 22nd. So our members received an ETF uptrend alert on the weekend. We do these on the weekends for lithium. And then the, since that time, it's gone up 123%. We did a similar ETF uptrend alert on rare earth metals. We used ticker symbol REMX. We alerted our members the following week on May 29th that a new major uptrend had begun in rare earths uh, metals. It's up 86% since that time. We alerted our members to a new uptrend, a major uptrend that was forming in silver on May 15th of this year. Our members have seen a 54% increase in the price of silver since that time. We detected a new major uptrend in silver miners, and we used the ticker symbol SIL to track silver miners, and we issued a new uptrend alert to all of our members by email on April 24th. Uh, since that time, the silver mining ETF has gone up 43%. Uh, we issued a major uptrend on water back on May 29th, platinum on May 29th, uh, gold miners on April 10th, agribusiness on June the 5th. So what we do is, is we track all of these commodity markets. And then when we detect a new major uptrend, we alert our members. Now our members and students have the ability not just to know that this new commodity has, you know, this commodity has entered a new uptrend, but when they log into the follow the money website, they also have access to our smart score system, which allows them to drill deeper. So they say, okay, commodities have entered a new uptrend. Well, what's the top ranked stock in the, you know, uh, agriculture or commodity sector? And let's say if we're just looking at agriculture, well, right now, when we look at our top ranked agricultural stocks, we see that there's several stocks near the top. We have stocks like Deere and Company, John Deere, right? Ticker symbol DE. Uh, that one's up 55% year to date. Caterpillar uh, is in this list, up 25%. We also have Tractor Supply, TSCO, right? Playing on this agricultural theme. There's water stocks that we track, right? We track water stocks. Some of our leading stocks include IDEX Laboratories, IDXX, up 83% year to date. Danaher Corporation, one of our favorite water stocks, DHR, up 47% year to date. So you can drill down. Maybe you're interested in solar energy or silver mining, or maybe you're interested in China stocks, or maybe you're more interested perhaps in some other kind of commodity, like maybe MLPs or energy stocks. We have the ability to drill down as a member or a student here to find those leading stocks in that area that's just entered a new uptrend. So this is why our members are and our students have done so well in 2020 or have had the opportunity to do so well is that because they know about new uptrends when they form and they also have corresponding lists of stocks in those industries or sectors that are top ranked based upon fundamentals. So it's really proven to be a great opportunity for our members and students here. So if you want to receive weekend ETF trend alerts from Follow the Money, all you have to do is become a member. It doesn't matter if you're a silver, gold, or platinum member, you're going to receive every weekend. If we detect a new uptrend in a major market, you're going to receive that that note. And boy, have we had some big, big uptrends this year. But as we head into the new year, as I mentioned, we don't see any kind of upside catalyst for the dollar. And we expect that many of these commodities are going to continue rising into 2021. You know, there's so many different commodities that are out there, gold and silver, as I mentioned, you have ag stocks, you have oil, you have MLPs like master limited partnerships, which pay high dividends. You know, those are kind of making a comeback right now. 
So when we think about 2021, what else might cause upward pressure upon the price of commodities? Well, we already said that a falling dollar is certainly one thing. Let's think about another thing. Let's think about politics. You say, well, what does politics have to do with the price of gold or silver? Well, let me explain. And by the way, I'm not a political guy. I tend to shy away from any kind of, you know, politics as a way of life. I tend to see the absurdity. It's just a, a theater of the absurd when I look at either Republicans or Democrats. I, I find it just to be nothing but comedy hour. And speaking of comedy hour, think about 2021. We have a new president coming in, President-elect Joe Biden, and President Trump is leaving office. He's going to be leaving the White House, and he's going to be going into what we would call you know, the ex-president status, right? He's still going to be President Trump, but he's not going to be living in the White House, right? So it's going to be an interesting thing to see how President Trump does in the post-presidency uh, situation. And if we know anything about how Mr. Trump has handled this so far, there's going to be many things that maybe the media is going to be shocked by, right? The media has been shocked by a Trump presidency. They're very likely going to be shocked by a Trump post-presidency. But what might be shocking about a post-presidency for Mr. Trump? Well, I think what might be shocking about it might be an upside catalyst for commodity prices. Let me explain. During President Trump's uh, tenure in office, what we heard constantly during the four years that he was in office was the fact that we now, underneath President Trump, had the greatest economy ever, right? The economy was the greatest ever with a national, and of course, this is all tongue in cheek. I mean, again, if you know economics, you know that that's absurd. You know that we had a massive national debt. You know that debt had never been higher. You know that the Federal Reserve was printing massive amounts of money even well before the coronavirus. You also know that there was a tremendous amount of spending going on that it was just unparalleled to anything before the Trump presidency. So the idea that we had the greatest economy ever was something that kind of worked its way into the consciousness of some of the people in the in the United States. And that caused them in many ways to put their guards down, right? Even though the national debt was soaring, and even though we had all this drunken sailor spending going on in Washington, what we did not have during during all of this time was a tea party. You remember the tea party in 2009, right after George W. Bush left the White House, we had a new entrant into the White House and it was President Barack Obama. Well, in 2009, there was a thing called the tea party. You may remember that political movement got really loud when, when George W. Bush was in office. No, no, it was after he left. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to see a pattern here. So the Tea Party emerged in 2009 whenever there was a Democratic president in the White House, right? But then, and of course, that voice went on for quite a long time. Now, when President Trump entered the White House, everything was suddenly better. You didn't necessarily need to buy gold and silver. Those commercials kind of went away. And the overall idea of the Tea Party, that went away. They kind of scurried away. And so for the last four years, we have had the most spending in world history. There has never been more spending by any nation than the United States over the past four years years. You can't find it that doesn't exist. So since we have all of this incredible spending and all of this reckless fiscal and monetary policy, now that Mr. Trump is leaving the White House, now we have a setup for similar to 2009. So we have the Republican president who's leaving the White House, and now we have another quote unquote socialist Joe Biden coming into the White House, right? And so what's that going to do? What's that going to create? Well, if we know the cycles of history, what it's going to create is a renewed Tea Party, right? We're also going to, I think, going to see a renewed zeal for buying gold and silver because the dollar is dropping. We're going to begin to see again these talking points about how bad the economy is now that Mr. Trump is not in office from the right. So Fox News has not been showing a lot of gold commercials lately, right? But gold has hit a new all-time high in 2020, even without it. So what we are, what I'm basically telling you is, is that the dishonest politics that we have in this country are actually going to be in favor of commodity prices as we move into 2021. They kind of went into the recesses, right? During the Trump administration. 
They kind of crawled under the rocks. You didn't hear anything about a Tea Party. There was no Tea Party. There's no Tea Party in the street saying Trump is wasting government money and he's bankrupting our grandkids. Did you hear that? I didn't see that. I didn't see anybody in the street during the Trump administration talking about how the, the Fed is printing too much money and we have to stop. Did you? I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. It went away whenever Mr. Trump went into office. So what I'm telling you is, is that the disingenuous, dishonest nature of our political system is going to allow this to reemerge in 2021. So in 2021, we expect to see a reemergence of the Tea Party. And let's go ahead and go on record right now and predict it. I don't make predictions very often, but I'll make a prediction on this one. The Tea Party is going to revive in 2021. Let me make another prediction. In 2021, you're going to begin to see more gold and silver commercials and an awareness of the debauching of the U.S. dollar and the fiat currency, right? You're going to continue to see more of this now as we have a new socialist, quote unquote, president in the White House, okay? And so this is how it works. Now, if you live in a world where someone who hands out checks from the government is not a socialist because he has an R next to his name, but someone who hands out checks to the public and he has a D next to his name, that's a socialist. If you live there, then you may miss this. But if, you, if you're dealing in honesty, if you're living in a world where you realize that you're being conned by both sides, that both sides are destroying the economy, that both sides of the political aisle are destroying your liberties, that both sides of the political aisle are destroying the future for our kids and our grandkids. When you when you assimilate that and you don't have a knight in shining armor on one side of the aisle and a Satan the devil on the other side of the aisle, whenever you see that they're both kind of really destroying the fabric of this country, then you can see how this could actually play out. So we expect to see a revival of the Tea Party and a revival of, you know, fiscal restraint once Biden is the one who's in the Oval Office, right? It's just classic. That's exactly how it always works, right? So we know that. And we're not picking on any particular political party to say this. We're making an obvious observation that anyone with eyes to see and ears to hear can can know from history. So that's what we expect. We And we also expect, remember what President Trump was saying before he entered office. Do you remember what he used to say about the Federal Reserve? He said, it's terrible. The Fed's printing too much money. They're keeping interest rates low to help then President Barack Obama. You know, fiscal policy is out of control. They're spending too much money, right? That's what citizen Trump was railing against the Federal Reserve, railing against the excessive spending. Whenever Mr. Trump became president, then it was, hey, let's spend tons of money that we don't have and let's get the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates to zero and print lots of money, right? Remember? I mean, everybody knows this, right? This is not a secret, is it? Okay, so that's what happened. But then whenever Mr. Trump leaves the, the White House, this ex-President Trump, I would suspect that he's going to move back into his pre-presidency kind of mode where he's going to be saying the Federal Reserve has left interest rates low too long. They need to raise interest rates. Remember, uh, President Trump, before he was president, railed against the stock market bubble, right? When he got into office, the stock market was the best stock market ever, and it was going to the moon, and nobody could stop it, and it was because of him. But then when he gets out of office, we expect to hear citizen Trump is probably going to be saying the stock market's a bubble, right? And the Fed is printing too much money and the government is spending too much money. So we would expect Trump with his big megaphone whenever he leaves the White House to go back to his normal talking points that he was saying before he was in the Oval Office. And that could have a detrimental impact, not only upon the stock market, but it could actually have a positive impact for the price of commodities. So to put it simply, the areas we're watching here as we head into 2021 is A, we see no upside catalyst for the US dollar going into 2021. We only see more downside. In fact, we would expect probably a 20% decline in the value of the dollar in 2021 if we had to guess. Secondly, we expect the revival of a Tea Party, which has not existed for the last four years. And if it has, nobody's even heard of it, but they're going to return and revive and reactivate now that a socialist quote unquote president is back in office who wants to send checks to the American people. And then, so we're going to have an ascendancy of the Tea Party and the, the fiscal conservative group. And then we're going to have a very unconventional and very untraditional, very likely, ex-president Trump, who is railing against the Federal Reserve, just as he did when he was citizen Trump, and railing against the stock market bubble underneath Biden. It'll become the Biden bubble, right? We can imagine this. Let's just, we're just doing a simple imagination of what 2021 might hold. 
And we would expect to see something like this. So a President Trump who is living outside of the Oval Office, the ex-President Trump, very likely going to be railing against the Federal Reserve in 2021, saying that they're keeping interest rates too low for too long, right? After telling them to lower interest rates for four years for his presidency. And we would expect him to be pointing out the excessive amount of spending by the Congress and by new President Biden, as well as talking about the stock market being in a bubble and probably calling it the Biden bubble, right? So that's what we see as we look into 2021. So all of that is going to be very bullish for things like gold and silver, which would go up in times where, just like we saw back during the Tea Party, right? When the Tea Party was making noise and it was talking about the national debt and it was talking about the excessive spending, it put a spotlight on gold and silver prices, right? It did. And we saw a big rally in gold and silver prices for a few years. By the way, for those of you who've been listening to Follow the Money Radio now for the last decade, this has been our message since day one. And we're not a part of the Tea Party. We're not part of the fiscal conservative movement. I don't view myself as a political person. The United States of America is a bankrupt nation, and they borrow a trillion dollars a year to pay their bills. This year, they borrowed more than $3 trillion to pay their bills, okay? So we don't applaud a nation like that. We don't look at a nation like that and say, everybody should emulate that. No, we see through the smoke screen, and we see that it's a bankrupt nation. The emperor has no clothes, and China is the greatest predator nation on the face of the earth, while the United States is the greatest debtor nation on the face of the earth. So you know who I'm rooting for? I'm not rooting for Trump. I'm not rooting for Biden. I'm not rooting for GOP. I'm not rooting for Democrats. You know what I'm rooting for? I'm rooting for my children, okay? I'm rooting for my my wife. I'm rooting for my grandchildren. I'm trying to protect them. I'm trying not to take sides with these two bozos in Washington that are destroying and carving up our nation and borrowing at a clip that is simply incredible. And I'm trying to think about you know, my own family. I'm trying to take care of my own community, right? Because that's all we can do. I can't change things in other countries. I can't change what's happening in Washington myself, but I can take care of my family. And what we find when we look consistently across the board is we find that many people know lots of things about Biden. They know lots of things about Trump. They know lots of things about Hunter Biden. They know lots of things about Eric Trump. But you know what they don't know? They don't know how to balance a checkbook right? And you know what else they don't know? They don't know how they're going to pay for retirement. And you know what else they don't know? They don't know how to buy gold. And you know what else they don't know? They don't know what Bitcoin is. And you know what else they don't know is they don't know how to set up their 401k at work. Okay, but they know all about Hunter Biden, right? And they know all about President Trump and all about his sons, right? They know all about that. Oh, they're filled to the brim with that. But they don't know how to take care of their own family. They don't know how to pay their bills. They don't know how to not stop living paycheck to paycheck. So you hear the passion in my voice today is to help you, right? We help our students. We help our members. We help people understand what's going on so that they can take advantage of the situation and protect themselves. So on most broadcasts and on many podcasts, it really boils down to what's your political philosophy, right? And political philosophy is way down the list when you don't have any retirement money, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? And so we are going to have, I believe, another round where we're going to hear again about how the Federal Reserve is, you know, printing too much money. And it's probably going to be coming from the same people who just turned a blind eye to it for the last four years. So all of that, I believe, is all a net positive for the price of gold and silver and of many other commodities, right? Because we have a declining dollar, because we have commodities in supply deficits across the board, almost every commodity right now is facing a deficit. Goldman Sachs put out a great piece not too long ago, building the case for a bull market in commodities out to 20, into 2021. So commodities certainly looking up as we head into the uh, new year. And we also have to throw in Bitcoin as a commodity. We have been long Bitcoin for many, many years. Many of our members and students have been long Bitcoin for a long time, and they have participated in a massive upside. We expect that 2021 will not only be a juggernaut year for many commodities, but it will be also for things like Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies as well. We have just, in fact, just been talking about 
some of that recently on some of our private group coaching calls that we do for our members and students. So there's a lot to take in there, but a commodity bull market we believe is on the way. The reasons have been laid out. And if you want to participate in this commodities bull market and you want to know what we're doing and how we're managing it and how we're profiting from it, become a member here at Follow the Money. If you become a silver, gold, or platinum member here, you'll receive a weekend ETF uptrend alert by email every single weekend. And if we don't detect any new uptrend alerts, we'll just tell you. But if we do detect a new uptrend alert, then we will alert you to that. And that will keep you in the know. So you'll know what's currently moving into an uptrend. And then of course, you have access to many different stocks and ETFs that you can use to take advantage of those trends. Powerful information, powerful education designed to equip, educate, and empower you so that you can improve your financial future and protect those that you love. Hey friends, Jerry Robinson here with Follow the Money Radio. Many of you know that I have been position trading and swing trading and even day trading the markets for nearly 25 years. And just recently, I completed a brand new swing trading course for those who are interested in learning how to create short-term profits by swing trading stocks, ETFs, or even cryptocurrencies. In this insightful and powerful 75-minute new video course, you will learn directly from me on many topics, including chart reading skills for swing traders, four moving averages that all swing traders should know, the best indicators for swing traders, stop-loss strategies for swing traders, and I even share many powerful swing trading entry and exit strategies with you, along with five swing trading pitfalls that you want to avoid. This is a power-packed video course for the new or experienced swing trader. And you can get access to this brand new swing trading video course in two different ways. One is simply to go to our website, followthemoney.com forward slash shop, and buy it through our online store. It's on special right now at a drastically reduced price. The second option that you have is to become a member here at Follow the Money, become a silver, gold, or platinum member, and you'll unlock instant access to this brand new swing trading course, along with a myriad of other trading and investing educational resources. If you're tired of watching stocks and cryptocurrencies and ETFs rise in price, but not actually participating in some of those gains, I encourage you to check out this brand new swing trading course, as it provides an excellent introduction to profitable short-term trading. Invest in yourself today. Go to followthemoney.com forward slash shop and buy our brand new swing trading course now on sale or become a member here at Follow the Money and unlock instant access to this course along with many other educational resources. Hey friends, this is Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly. Recently, we have been receiving many emails from our listeners commenting on the great help they're getting from our precious metals expert, Tom Cloud. Gold and silver are excellent hedges against the growing threat of coming U.S. inflation. Who's your gold guy? Make it Tom Cloud. With over 30 years' experience with precious metals, Tom will answer all of your questions. Don't buy your gold and silver through some call center and pay inflated prices. Call my good friend Tom Cloud and speak directly with him and get all of your questions answered. For a limited time, Tom is offering free shipping and insurance on every gold and silver purchase made by our listeners. Call 800 247 2812. And when you do, tell him that Jerry Robinson from Follow the Money Weekly sent you. And he'll throw in that free shipping and insurance on your entire order. Call your gold guy, Tom Cloud, right now for the very best deals on gold and silver coins. 800-247-2812. That is 800-247-2812. friends, welcome back to the final segment of today's podcast. And by the way, this is the last podcast of 2020. It's hard to say whether good riddance to 2020 or, <laughs> or sad to see it go. I think I'll go with the former. What a year this has been. Let's hope that next year is a better year, broadly speaking, not only for our, our sanity, but also just for humanity in general. I really would like to see this public health crisis 
eradicated like all of us would. It's been such a trying time for all of us. But, uh, you know, it's 2020 is just about over. Doesn't mean that 2021 will be any better, but let's just all hope that it is. And by the way, before we bring today's podcast, this final one of 2020 to a close, we have a giveaway to do because on our last podcast, we mentioned that we were going to give away our options trading course, which is available on our online store. You go to followthemoney.com forward slash shop. And there you can find all of the different courses that we have available on swing trading, on options trading, position trading. You know, there's so many different things we have in our store that it can help you. And today we're going to be giving away one of our options trading courses. And all you had to do was go to our website and enter in your name to win. And today we're going to give that away. And I need my drum roll, please. The winner is Eric L. from Pennsylvania. Eric Thank you so much for reaching out to us and thank you for participating in our giveaway. You are now the owner of our options trading course. You'll be receiving an email with instructions on how to access that very, very shortly. By the way, Eric had mentioned that he would like to hear Anthony Popliano on our podcast or me on Anthony's podcast. He said, both of you are interested in investing in Bitcoin, and I think the two of you would hit it off really well. You both have really cool podcasts, and I would think you would benefit each other and each other's listeners with the discussion on investing in crypto. I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Eric, for that idea. We might reach out to Anthony about that. So once again, congratulations to you, and thank you for participating in our giveaway. All right, friends, with all that said, that brings us to the end of our broadcast. And as always, I'd like to leave you with a final word. This time, it's a quote by Susie Kasem. When she said, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. Well, that's a good quote. And don't give up on things just because things are hard. When I look back through my own life, I think about some of the trials and tribulations that I had to go through. If you have a dream, if you are moving towards something, if you have a passion, don't give up. Keep going. Keep learning. Keep getting back up. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. Don't give in to fear and doubt keep the faith. And that's just something to think about. Remember, friends, when you want the truth about the global economy, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right back here next time in 2021. God bless. information contained on the follow the money podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes it should not be construed as specific investment advice the views and opinions of our guests and sponsors including tom cloud are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of ftmdaily.com or robinson media group llc jerry robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products follow-up individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations past performance is not indicative of future results you should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.